Hello everyone, Anand Project here. Today I'll be sharing with you the second episode of my UKSP series. In the background you can see me build our next spacecraft in which we'll hopefully reach orbit. I'm just putting on mystery goo, barometers and thermometers so we can get that sweet science from orbit. Although <laughs> I, and I gotta say, like, you don't get extra science points um, from science experiments in orbit. So it was kind of pointless to bring the mystery and the thermometers, but we still got science from the barometers, so it wasn't pointless. Yeah, and since we've now unlocked the heat shield, we'll just put it on. Doesn't really care, and we'll reduce the ab ablator because... You never really need it, except you're coming in from very high heights. And um, it just adds a lot of weight that you can save yourself. So we've also got the new big fuel tanks, in which uh, fits double the amount of fuel as in the small ones, which uh, makes it easier. And we don't have to place a horrendous amount of fuel tanks. I'm just painting them white because I... I felt like it, and of course, the swivel engine. The next, uh, first stage, or semi-first stage, um, I'm painting this orange, why not, and I'll, it'll consist of the same amount of fuel tanks as the, as the last stage, and also have uh, swivel engine. It's actually a reliant engine, sorry. Um, but you're going to see. <laughs> I, in the last video I said I normally don't use it and you, you're you going to see why I, I don't use it. I accidentally I picked the hammer boosters because I forgot uh, we've unlocked the th thumper already, which it's much bigger, much better. Also has its problems, um, especially because of its high, high, tr high thrust in comparison to the other engines. But um, it'll work out fine. Let's put it on. And also some aerodynamic nose cones at the end. Yeah, and few wings so that we control it because I I chose to use the Reliant engine so I wanted to have some more control in air so I added some fins and some delta wings so we could steer in air even without having a gimbal. Now rocket is ready and I'm going to launch this thing. Now we've launched it and Jebedai Kerman is very excited <laughs> to be part of the next evolution of Unknown Project's rockets. And in this mission, we're basically just going to get into orbit to get the science points for recovering a vessel from current orbit and also getting this new science points for the barometer that we have unlocked. You can see there's quite an amount of wobble in the boosters, which isn't as good as um, you might hope. Also, I realized I can't really do a gravity turn because um, the wings were oriented in the fall, false way. And now, as you can see, the aerodynamic drag is so big that it basically becomes impossible to steer the rocket. So at this point, I'm just basically gi giving up and just letting it be. You can see it gets pretty hot. Um, I've been lucky to not burn up there. It might have gotten close, but now that the boosters have burned out and the reliant stage is almost empty as well, we are going to detach it. So, with the second and third stage detached, we will continue our burn. And this time we're going to make it at a much steeper angle as you see our apoapsis is pretty high because we couldn't make the gravity turn. It's basically very inefficient flight but 
for the thing I wanted to achieve, it was just enough. You'll see, it was like a minuscule amount of fuel left after I reached orbit, just to the orbit again and and land. Which, in the worst case scenario, I would need to use the Kerbal to push using its EVA pack. So now a time opening to our maneuver node, since if you want to get into orbit, it's most efficient to do it at ap apoapsis. So we just quickly time up there and set our rocket to follow the maneuver point and burst off. So this goes pretty quickly, but as you see, we don't have that many, that much fuel. I'm just checking in the top left corner there's readout stating the apoapsis, periapsis and stuff it's from the mod Kerbal Engineer Redux and um, it's a very helpful mod especially for those overlays there are even more I currently don't use them but I'll enable them soon if I need them so um, this is very helpful to know when you need to burn how long you need to burn because also the maneuver node maker isn't too detailed so now I have taken Jebediah coming out since he's been trapped in that capsule for a long time now and just let him float a bit in space until he gets back in to attend a landing. So now I'm just checking if I've already got a crew report and I wasn't sure if the biomes make a difference. They don't. So um, that's that was the last amount of fuel left in our engine, so you can see it was pretty pretty close. Yeah, and now we're going coming into the night side of the planet. I'm sorry, um, it's very dark in the video, but I'll fix that very soon. In the settings, you can increase the ambient light. I'm going to increase it, so now um, you can see what's going on. And we are slowly entering the atmosphere. You can already see the heat shield slowly heating up. Just checking the instruments if something new appeared but didn't. And now we are going full on into the atmosphere. I love the re entry effects, they're so, so beautiful. Yeah, and this camera glitch, I don't actually know what happened, just the camera started extremely to wobble. And probably because of the high G forces, even though they aren't actually that high. So now you can see the, the sunrise happening, almost happening. And we are going to land in the Shores biome, which is basically worst case scenario, I, because I've got from the Shores biome since that's the biome, the KSC is located so um, not a good biome to land in and it's also very limited it's a very small strip of land and just landing there pretty inconvenient but for our purpose we'll get enough science so now we have splashed down and I am now going to recover the vessel since we we're done with this mission. So we've got 32.9 science which isn't too much but we've got enough to unlock enough parts to fly the next big mission because for that we need the terrier engine which I just unlocked. Um, it's very essential because it's super efficient in, in vacuum and if we want to go to the man for example then we might need that so um, it's very essential for interplanetary and also for um, burning in space the swivel engine isn't that great it's more sea level optimized which makes it pretty terrible We're going to put down like one fuel tank because we can have like an even bigger fuel tanks, which makes building a lot easier. I'm just going to switch it to the black variant because why not? And 
put a terrier engine on. You're going to see like alone in this stage. Now it doesn't quite show up, but uh, alone in this stage we have 2,400 meters per second delta V, which is an insane amount. It's probably enough to land on the Mun or to fly by the Mun and Minmus. So um, that's it's a powerful rocket. Maybe I'll continue using it in the next episode. I'm not sure. But we'll see. So now you can see me duplicating all these small fuel tanks. The good thing is um, KSB fuel tanks are um, not really calculated in a way that makes them... So if you put a lot of small fuel tanks, it isn't way more inefficient than putting big fuel tanks. So it is um, totally viable. It's just more inconvenient to have super small fuel tanks. But you take what you have, use what you have. Now just putting on some mystery goo and two thermometers so we can get that science we need. The rocket is in principle pretty similar to our last rocket, just adding a decoupler and heat shield because this time we are going to need it. Um, yeah, so it's pretty similar. We have two thumper boosters, but the big difference is and the terrier engine and the big fuel tanks in the second stage. Putting on the Delta Air Wings too, because with high aerodynamic drag, it's it's becoming more difficult to steer your rocket. Um, even if you have a gimbal, which now didn't make the fault and put a reliant engine on, I used a swivel engine, which has a gimbal. It once again, you can see how trash the reliant engine is like. It, so there's really no point in using it. Also, the thumper boosters, as you saw in the last launch, uh, they kind of they weren't very powerful, which make them flex, and that's never good. Anyway, now let's launch the rocket, preparing SAS, and lift off. You can see the thumper boosters with lower thrust. We don't send quite as fast but it's much more controllable and at the end also more efficient because we can now do our gravity turn gradually slowly but we can do it so now we're turning starting to turn it's still not quite easy but this, these wings are really helping and also you can see the gimbal in, ad in action I really tried to turn more aggressively, but the thumper boosters, even though they were at only around 60% thrust, they still completely uh, outweighted the swivel engine. So the real turn is going to come once we've detached them. But that's not really a problem. Our apps is still around 25 kilometers, so there's plenty of room to steer. Now you can see. Uh, Fairly aggressive gravity turns, so not too aggressive, you can do it more aggressively. I'm now pointing around 45 degrees and I'm slowly lowering my pitch so that at the end I am in a horizontal position. So now you can see where we are, we still have a lot of fuel left in the main stage and we are now reaching our target apoapsis of around 75 kilometers that's pretty good um, especially if you have a small rocket and you don't need to burn as long burns and um, 75 kilometers apoapsis should be good for used to uh, for you to if you don't know the apoapsis or basically not, the atmosphere in ksp ends at 70 kilometers so you always try to go a bit higher than that some go 80 kilometers I go more like um, 75. I just um, like that more, and it's also a bit more efficient because you need to burn less, which makes it easier. So now I can see I've created a maneuver node just to check how much delta V I need and when do I need to burn. So now I am burning all the rest of my current engine, or almost all my engine. You can see I still have a little bit of fuel left that we are going to use to go to the man. Yeah, we are going to the man. 
probably already saw it in the title, but um, we are going to the man. You're going to see we don't have any landing legs because um, when I was building this rocket, I didn't really think it could make it to land, which I probably was wrong. It probably could have landed on the man, but um, so now we're just going to do a flyby and next episode we'll take a look at landing on Minmus and maybe on the man. Yeah, so creating a maneuver node to the man is actually pretty easy. You just start at one of the um, ascending or descending nodes. It's, I think it's a, it's a de descending node where you start and then you just drag it out. Since it's not very complicated, you can just move it around your orbit and try to find the perfect match as you see me doing it here. Then you can just adjust prograde, retrograde and the normals, although I normally try to don't touch them because they basically make everything less efficient, which shouldn't be the point. <laughs> so um, just try to use prograde and retrograde. So I can see me time warping to my maneuver node that I created. And as you can see in my first stage, or in the second stage, there isn't enough fuel for the whole burn. There's only around 180 meters per second delta V. So I'll be decoupling in the middle. The good thing is KSP calculates that in and it shows the correct burn time for the different stages. I know like prior to KSP 1.8 it was always a bit buggy um, with the calculations, but since 1.8 and especially after 1.9 they, they might have changed something because the calculations are way more accurate now which I really appreciate so I can see we can even see the man right in front of us which is going to be our target yeah so now you can see we've reached our target orbit and I'm just going to time warp to apoapsis It's um, now I'm going to continue to time warping and you're going to see that the maneuver node creator isn't accurate. So as you just saw, um, well, all of a sudden my trajectory went out of the Monsu of Influence, even though it was in inside before. This isn't quite the big problem because um, I still have a lot of Delta V left in my stage, so I just did a quick radial burn to get back to the Mun. And now we're set on an encounter. So now I'm just trying to get closer to the Mun since I want to get the signs from high and uh, from space high above Mun and space low, which I'm not exactly sure when space low begins, so I'll just try go very low. I think I at the end targeted for around 8 kilometers. It was enough. Uh, maybe in the comments you can write what actually the altitude is, but it worked out for me. So now I'm burning to change my trajectory. As I said, I have a lot of Delta V in this Terrier stage, that's why I need to unlock it. The Terrier engine is extremely efficient and you also end up using it in later missions if you can't use the nuclear engine for whatever reason. So now you can see me getting the science from space high above Mun, and I'm also going on the EVA to again collect the data um, so that I can make multiple crew reports as I explained in the first episode. It's a very handy trick that I use often. Just saw it. So now you can see me above the Mun. Um, just quick cut. <laughs> I really love it now. Um, after 1.8.1, I think they changed the textures of the man and it looks so freaking good. But I'm just getting science. We're not going to land today. It's going to be someone else. Somewhere else. But we're getting out. We can enjoy the viewing and the credit surface of the beautiful terrain that was added. So I'm just Jebedar coming, enjoying it, 
enjoying the sunrise. As you can see his big smile on his face. Just doing a quick EVA report and then just hopping back in. So we're basically done with the moon now. Just zooming out <laughs> to a fish eye view, but we're basically done with the moon. So um, I return to Kerbin. At this point, I didn't actually realize I could slingshot myself into uh, an encounter with Minmus. But at the end, I said, screw it. Like, I can go to Minmus another time. It's, um, I don't have any science uh, experiments left on my craft that I can use. So it would be a waste of time to go to Minmus right now. And we've got other episodes to come. So <laughs> we'll do it there. So now you can see I've deorbited. And... As you can probably imagine, I'll be hitting Kerbin with a very high orbital velocity. That's why I n definitely need that healed shield, because at this speed, the normal capsule would just disintegrate. So now I'm going to detach my stage and let it burn up in Kerbin 2. So I've entered the atmosphere, you can see how the heat starts increasing very violently, even on the heat shield there's heat, heat gauge which um, normally never happens. Also the camera shakes going crazy, so we're coming in with pretty high force and Jebedi Kerman just went un unconscious. Um, this can be very dangerous depending on what kerbal you have. I had it, it took like 20 seconds, it was just above the surface that it, um, he or her woke up and I could activate the parachute. So that's the reason I activate Kerbal GeForce Limits, it just adds that extra bit of suspense, which I really enjoy. So now I'm just doing an EVA report because I actually haven't done that yet from the grasslands. And before I land, I just do crew report too. And now I'm just going to time warp down to the ground and hop out to take a surface sample because I again I haven't done that yet. I have only done it on shores and in water until now. So I just do a surface sample and I'll hop back in. So what do you bet? How much science did we get? <laughs> You're going to see. So we've got 245.1 signs just from this mission, which this is a crazy amount. Now we've got 272 signs, which we are not going to spend this episode. We're going to spend it the next episode uh, where we're going to continue our mission. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe, like, and of course, ring the bell so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Bye. Thank you.